and well oh, what is going on there hello and welcome to another video today I'm going to be doing a rear discs and pad change on my mark 3 mx5 as well as a complete flush of the brake fluid this is getting ready for my track day which is in about a week's time so uh, let's get on with it okay so now taking the rears off I think the rears are slightly different um, I haven't actually looked at what they look like yet but we'll get there take the wheel off Oh. Every time I hit it on the caliper. Same floating caliper arrangement. Probably slightly different sizes on the bolts. Got it. Working on cars, you tend to clobber your hands quite a lot. Clobber, for those of you who don't know, English for uh, hit into something very hard and it really, really hurts. And the other one is all the way down at the bottom of the caliper. Okay, I've got my spanner stuck. Take a break, come back in a second. Okay, I've managed it. <laughs> what had happened there is the spanner was on the wrong way around. So it could only tighten up and it could only tighten up against the caliper. So it was tightening on itself and there's no space to take it off this way because the uh, brake line was in the way. So I couldn't take it off unless I spun the other nut that was holding it in, but that was seized on. So yeah, very difficult. So uh, managed to get the other nut off back to where I was. This back left has been my nemesis. It might warrant a cup of tea now that I've done it. Okay, so great news. I have sheared a bolt. Uh, it didn't feel right, so I gave it one more turn. And yeah, bang, snapped straight off. So, that's not good. Um, gotta have a think. <laughs> so this is the caliper carrier. The bolt bolts through the wheel hub, which goes here, and then bolts into the carrier. And what had happened is the bottom one was fine. That was tightened up, that was torqued up. And then the top one, put through, tightening up. It felt a bit weird, tell something wasn't quite right, wasn't quite sure what it was, turned it a little bit more and snap, bang. The worst bit was that this piece of the bolt was stuck inside here. Luckily, for whatever reason, I was able to twist it out. I don't need a new carrier, I don't need a new caliper, I just need a new bolt. I'm hoping that they have these in stock at Mazda, given that it's a Sunday, but they're not open yet, so uh, yeah, just gonna ring them, see if they've got it in stock. They don't open till 11, so whilst I wait for that, I'm gonna do the other side in preparation, and then we should be good to go. So that was not very tight at all, which is good. Good for me, because I can take it off easily, but don't know if it's good for the brakes. First caliper bolt out. Second one I can't fit the socket on the end of because I've only got a half inch with an adapter on it and a 12 mil. I can't actually get it onto the end of the uh, to the end of the bolt. So what I'm going to have to do is use an open-ended spanner on there. You can see the uh, caliper's actually wanting to twist, and that's because I took the bolt out. So I'm just going to leave that bolt in. There we go. Second one's loose. It's all good. This bolt's never been taken off, I can tell, because uh, the head on it's covered in rust. 13 years worth of rust. UK rust. It's a special kind. And there's what I mean by uh, that bolt's never been taken off, you can tell. Oh, top tip, don't leave your handbrake on when you do this because you will not be able to get that off because the handbrake is making sure that you can't. That's not personal experience that I know that. <laughs> and there we have the uh, rear caliper with the piston in it and you can see the piston is slightly different. It's got this uh, cross on the front of it and that you need to screw in instead of just push in like the front. So um, I've got the special tool which I mentioned earlier to screw that in. That's why, because the rear piston screws as well as pushes. So it twists and pushes in as opposed to just pushing in like the fronts. So now I'm going to take the two bolts off that hold the uh, caliper carrier onto the hub. I'm going to put a little bit of penetrating fluid on these. By penetrating fluid I mean the uh, world famous WD-40. Where are you 14? Why can't I find you? You want to move this out of the way? You better not give me a lot of grief you bolts. I know what you like. <laughs> Okay, I really need some sort of metal bar to go on the top of my uh, ratchet to give me a bit more leverage. These caliper carrier bolts are pretty stiff. Um, just realised I didn't have the camera on whilst I took that first one out, but that's what it looks like. They're very, very tight. I've got my ratchet, half inch, and then I've got a bar extension to go over it, just to give me that bit more leverage, because, um, yeah, they're really, really tight. All right, second one. Hopefully it'll go all right. Yep, that's got it. Wow. I've also increased the internal diameter of the bar <laughs> because that wouldn't go over there earlier and now it goes all the way in. <laughs> Second bolt out. Jobs are good in. Now this should just slide off and that should allow us to take the disc off and change it out. And the disc is loose on both sides on the rear. Even though it has got a hole to screw it in, there is no hole on the hub. So if I take this off, you can see that there isn't actually a hole to put in a screw on the hub. 
And yeah, there's the rear disc, so um, quite corroded actually. So I've seen this before where the face that you can see from the outside of the car looks fine, and then the inside face of the disc looks corroded. So this one is, yeah, not great, but again, it is 13 years old. Definitely never been changed, that one. Let's get the shiny new Brembos on. So these Brembos that I'm putting on, they're not anything uh, crazy special. Um, they're not genuine Mazda brake discs because um, genuine Mazda brake discs are really, really expensive. And so I just went for some uh, decent quality Brembos, not slotted or drilled. The slots are meant to dissipate the brake dust and the drills are meant to dissipate heat. But to be honest, I think most people say that the uh, standards are just absolutely fine with the standard calipers and some good pads on it. The pads are the most important thing really. So disc is on, now I'm going to put the new pads inside the uh, caliper hanger, which has definitely seen better days this one. Going to hit that with a wire brush really quickly. First going to take the old pads out and they should just slide out each side. So not as much meat on the rears as you can see, still quite a lot left on them. And you want to keep the uh, little brackets that are on the back of here. Ugh. Careful not to wire brush the uh, rubber grommets that are on there. So they're all good. So now we can put the uh, new pads in. You can see the old pads have uh, definitely seen their time. You can tell this one's got the uh, cross on it. Let's take that little bracket off, put the new pad in. When I say off, I didn't mean throw it on the floor, but. So new brake pads here, whip on the side of it, and it looks identical, which is uh, good news. And then this little bracket's gonna go around here like that. And then we're gonna push that into the carrier. So now we've got the uh, Caliper carrier with the two new brake pads in it on the rear. It's 1101, they're open. For parts, press three. For account. Special delivery. Ta da, replacement bolts. So it actually took me two days to get these. Uh, the Mazda near me had to order them in specially, but I've got four, so I'm going to replace all four just to be safe. I now have confidence in my rear brakes. Woohoo! Now we're going to put the caliper carrier back on after two days of it being sat here unfinished. Now I have to remember which way around it went on because I've not touched it for two days. Straight in there. Which means it is the right size. What's the saying? Measure twice, bolt once. Right, now I'm going to torque those two up. Do 60 newton meters. Second one tightening up now. There we go. Next thing is to push the caliper back in. So this is different to the front because the front you can do it with a bar, but because this is the rear, it's got the handbrake mechanism attached to it here. So you can do it with a screwdriver and you can wind it back in, but you can also buy a piston wind back tool, which is designed specifically to wind back pistons. So the piston has a cross on it and these pins on the tool are gonna to slot into that cross and then push against it. Okay, so you can see the piston starting to wind back in now as I apply the pressure. So that means that the fluid's been pushed back through the system and the reservoir should start filling up. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the fluid reservoir to see that it's not overflowing. Okay, so we're still good. We're not quite at the max yet. I'm gonna remove all of this anyway when we do the brake flush and suck out as much as possible from the reservoir. Okay, so I think that'll do it and it should slot right over. So now we put the caliper slider bolts back in and start with the bleed procedure. That feels about 20 to 25 to me. Let's hope that doesn't come undone when we're on track. So helping me is Glamorous Assistant Dave. Hello. Dave is coming on track next week as well, so you'll Ooh. see lots more of Dave in uh, the next few videos. So now we're going to do the brake fluid, we're going to flush the whole system, and for that I'm going to use ATE Type 200. It's meant to be very, very good, and the boiling point is 280 degrees C, so it's a bit of a performance uh, brake fluid. But Dave is going to be pressing the brake pedal down um, because I, my legs aren't that long. Good job. Let's go. The car's 50th birthday present, as in 50,000 miles, is going to be on track, as Dave just pointed out. How many miles has it done? 49,601. What I'm going to do is take all the old fluid out of the reservoir. You can see the colour of it there. It's almost black, which shows me that it hasn't been changed in a very, very long time. Probably more than two years. You're meant to change brake fluid every two years because it is hydroscopic and water gets into it. Brakes get really hot, so uh, they get over 100 degrees C. And what happens to the water in the brake fluid is that it turns into steam, that expands, and then when you push on your brakes, you don't get any braking effect because you have a small space inside it. 
and then you're compressing air, not hydraulic fluid, and that's what happens when you get uh, boil brakes and no brakes. This method isn't great. I'm using an old pump that I used for my uh, rear diff fluid video. Go and watch that if you haven't seen it. Basically, extract the fluid out using my pump. We're going to use the uh, little funnel that we've got here to pour the new brake fluid into the reservoir. Start on this one, so flare spanner arm, hose over the end. So this is a quarter inch hose. Best to have a clear hose as well so you can see what's going on. Quarter inch is about six millimeters. Down and up. A little bit of air came out of that one, which is good. Three, two, one, down. And up. Down in three, two, one. And up. You can see that fluid level just getting a bit low there, so last time I'll put some more fluid in. We've still got plenty of fluid left, which is a good sign. So I didn't go for braided brake lines because um, I didn't really fancy doing it. The performance gain is apparently negligible. It just removes a bit of that spongy feel, so it'll feel better, but you won't actually stop any better. I don't know if you can see that. This nipple is slightly bigger than the other ones, so someone has changed this at some point for a bigger nipple. Does it sound really rude? <laughs> Down in three, two. You're right. <laughs> and up. <laughs> so I'm taller than Dom. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? Yeah, that was good. That was I good. don't need to go to the gym this week. My right leg is so strong now. So it's, yeah. it's like a workout. Okay, so that's the uh, complete flush of the system. I think we did it okay. If not, I'm going to have to do it again before the track day. The fluid level's just below the max on the reservoir, which is good. A little bit spilt there, my bad. Um, so now, wheels on, test drive. Not sure if I can do the test drive tonight. Got to bed the pads in and the discs, but um, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so I've just put the wheels on. You've seen that loads of times, so I didn't film it. Haven't talked them up yet. I'm going to drop it down, then talk them on the ground. Massive thank you to Dave uh, for helping me bleed those brakes. He's shut off now. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do the bedding in procedure tonight because I'm rapidly running out of light. Um, so maybe in the next shot it might be really light because I might be doing the bedding in tomorrow. You'll know before me. It works! It feels absolutely fine. Yes! Track day, here we come! Yes! See you tomorrow.